Who am I? I am no one except that he and his mercy and his grace came and took a piece of clay and fashioned it into a vessel. And in that vessel, he put his living water. That's who I am. When you all say you want to praise God that you woke up in the morning, and you want to praise God that you woke up in your right mind, Amen. and you want to praise, where's that little microphone? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not used to being in church. I'm sorry, I'm not used to being in church. I'm used to being in prison. And I'm used to being overseas. And I'm used to being among the Native Americans. And I'm used to being among the crack addicts. And I'm used to being among prostitutes. And I'm used to being among people that need the Lord. Sometimes you don't find people in church that need the Lord. but I'm used to being around people that need the Lord. Every day they pass me by, I can see it in their eye. People need the Lord. They need the Lord. So when you wake up in the morning, are you ready to tell somebody that they need the Lord? You see, I learned how to thank God for waking up in the morning, not being in my right mind. I learned how to thank God for waking up in the morning not being able to walk. I learned how to thank God for waking up in the morning not even knowing I was awake in the morning. I learned how to lay upon my bed and cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And when I talk about the Lord, I mean the Lord Jesus Christ. I learned how to say I do this for the glory of God because I did it because of his glory and there was nothing else but his glory that enabled me to do it. And why am I saying that? Who am I? I am no one but a vessel that has living water inside of that vessel. I am no one. And why am I saying that? Because I charge you by the Holy Ghost. 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 If you can wake up in the morning and if you can open your mouth, that you tell somebody that they need the Lord. I charge you by the Holy Ghost that if you start making disciples of Jesus Christ that you go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and teaching them everything that he has taught you I charge you by the Holy Ghost I charge you by the Holy Ghost I charge you by the Holy Ghost Take your wheelchair someplace and tell Jesus, tell somebody about Jesus. Take your wheelchair someplace and tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah, because they'll listen to you, sister. They'll listen to you because you don't do it just because of candy. They'll listen to you. Who am I? I am a broken vessel. When I was broken, oil poured forth. That's who I am. I am no one. And that's what I'm very excited about, is because I am the worst of all sinners. Who are you? But someone that can have Jesus in your life 
Have you told somebody about Jesus today? I would like to share with you, and I guess I, ha I have to give you my credentials, otherwise you're not going to know why I'm sharing this with you. My credentials are that I was the worst of all sinners. Mary Magdalene was my name. I started at three years old. That's pretty early, isn't it? And finished at 16. I continued one year of torment, 17, living the life of Mary Magdalene since I was three, which doesn't make much sense to many of you. But the devil came to me when I was three years old and started training me in his ways. You see, I'm one of those people that needed someone to say, Jesus loves you. And not just say Jesus loves you religiously, but really know who Jesus is. When we pray and we talk to Jesus, are we really talking to Jesus? Or are we talking to the congregation? Who are we talking to? Are we talking to Jesus or are we talking just to hear ourselves talk? I can't compromise with you because you know what? I want you all to be in heaven with Jesus. When I was 22 years old, I went to Mexico and I made a very major mistake. When I made that major mistake, my body became full of parasites. I lived with parasites for 14 years before the doctors found them. So when you live with parasites for 14 years, you don't look as good as I do today. You look like somebody in a wheelchair. And usually you can't hold yourself up in the wheelchair. You always have to walk accompanied with a nurse 24 hours a day. You can never sleep alone. You have to have somebody laying there next to you, waking you up in the night and saying, Teresa, breathe. Do you believe me? Some of you do. Others say, you're just joking me. That's all right. I know Jesus. Amen. And when I was in that state, my husband had to carry me most of the time to bed. Pick me up and carry me. And I wasn't light either. My husband's strong. He's a mechanic. I was heavier than I am now. Because of the medicine that they gave me made me very, very heavy. And I couldn't walk. And in that state, because of the scripture that I'm going to read to you, I had the strength to tell people about Jesus. In that state, because of the scripture that I'm going to read to you, I went to the Philippines, and I went to Burma, and I went to India, and I went every single place that I could possibly go to tell people about Jesus until the last six years when I couldn't go any place. But when people came to my bedside, I told people about Jesus because I don't want people to burn in hell. I know not everybody here is understanding what I'm saying, but if you understand, I want to impart to you something today that you will have a desire in your heart that people that you know will not go to hell. You see, hell doesn't stop. That song, what was it, Trouble Never Stops or whatever? Trouble don't last long. I'm telling you something. Hell lasts a long time. I was blessed. I had six years of hallucinating hell. And who am I? I was a missionary. I didn't deserve that kind of treatment. Now did I? When you sing and you stand and you sing that song, I say, yes, Lord. That song breaks me up. Do you know what that means when you say yes? You stand up and you say, God, crush me. Make me into powder. Make me just like you, Jesus. Make me so that other people will see you, Jesus. Oh, aren't we glad that we pray those prayers when we just become born again? Because I wanted to renege and say, God, I really want to take this prayer back. He said, Teresa, it's too late. I'm answering your prayer. People of God, please, please, please.
please look for the power of God in your life. Please, there are so many of you in this room, but where are you when I'm in the Philippines? I've never seen this many people come to the Philippines as missionaries. I never seen you in the prisons. Where are you? I never seen you in the old folks' homes. Just me and a bunch of kids. Where are you? Where are you? I'm not saying that you're not doing something. I'm just, and I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying, come on and go with me. And when you wake up in the morning, thank God that you can wake up in your right mind. And thank God that you can wake up feeling whole. And thank God that you've got a mouth that can say somebody loves you. Thank God that you've got a heart that can feel love. God, we just pray right now that this people would be consumed with your love and your peace and your joy that you might have something to give to someone else. Isaiah 26. If you got a Bible, open it. Let's all read it so we all know what it says. You see, I'm a recruiter. You know what that is? One of those people that's in the army that's looking for recruits. Recruiters are strange people. They're not just like normal people. Every time they see someone, they just want them all to join the army. And I'm not asking you to come and be a part of our ministry. I'm just asking you to realize that you're in the army. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking for anything, really. You can go to college. You can go any place. I'm just asking that you would go ye therefore. That's all I'm asking, because that's what our Jesus asked, is that we would go therefore. Isaiah 26, it says, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us. Verse 12, for thou hast, all, thou hast also for thou also has wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords besides thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise, therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. What I'm here to tell you is that the Lord can ordain peace for you. If you're not in peace physically, if you're not in peace mentally, if you're not in peace somehow, he can ordain peace for you. But the thing that the Lord spoke to my heart this morning that all of us would know is this scripture here. For thou hast wrought all our works in us. When we talked about beauty for ashes, and I should read that scripture so you know what we're talking about. It's in um, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord, verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. God is sending you. He wants to send you to bind up the brokenhearted. I, I can hear somebody say, well, I'm not ready for that. You're right, you aren't ready for that, if you say that. But please, can we get ready for this? Can we get ready for the whole word of God? Can we get ready for the whole Bible? Can we get ready for the fact that it will not just pass through our pastor or our pastors or our deacons, but that we also might be a part of the go ye? Can we get ready? Is anybody here this morning? When it's that quiet in prison, you're in trouble, boy. If they're not saying amen, you better get ready and look for the door. Of course, I always put you in there, you know, with, your, with the door farthest away from you. I've never been able to figure that one out. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, 
to the opening of prison to them that are bound. Christians, are we in prison? Are we brokenhearted? Are we depressed? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. Have we experienced the vengeance of God? You know what the vengeance of God wants to go against? What we were reading in Isaiah 26. Those memories, those former lords, that he might visit and destroy them and make their memory to perish. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I don't want to speak long this morning because I'm not going to stand up here and say something that God isn't giving me to say. And it's all right if I just speak five minutes. I don't really mind. God wants to be glorified. I'm talking to you, but I, I don't feel it penetrating in your heart. God wants to be glorified. He wants a people in Ezekiel 36. He says, I have called you out from among the heathen where you've shamed his name. He wants a people that will no longer shame his name. In Ezekiel 36, it says, you had a heart of stone. I'm giving you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit upon you and I will cause you to walk in my ways. He wants to be glorified. That's why he wants to take your ashes. He wants to be able to stand and he wants to be able to say to the Satan, he says, hey, have you seen my servant, Nicole? He wants to stand and say, have you seen my servant, Drew? Why? Because there is a great cloud of witnesses that is watching you that cloud of witnesses is not just angels and it's not just heaven. It is heaven saying, I'm looking for the time that Joanne is going to grab on to what I'm saying. I'm looking for the time that somebody is going to pick up that torch and start glorifying God. And when people look at your life, which is a living epistle to be read of all men and women, they're going to see Jesus. We need to see Jesus. The Greeks came to the Jews and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. When you look in the mirror, do you see Jesus? Or do you see ashes? Do you see the beauty of the Lord and the beauty of holiness? Or do you see ashes? I just feel the Lord compelling and drawing. He says, you know, Israel, oh Israel, how I wanted to gather you in my wings. He's saying to his people, I want to gather you. Yes, God's not saying you're doing the wrong thing. He's not saying you're a bad person. He's not saying anything like that. He's saying that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the time that I would be glorified. He's saying there's a time, church, that we have prayed and we prayed, oh God, you know, do this in my life, do that in my life. Oh God, I want this. Oh God, I want that. He's saying it's time to be glorified. It's time that I might be glorified. He's saying, church, you're talking about how it's the last days. You're all talking about how it's the last days and, and how there's trouble on the earth because it's the last days. But have you seen what the word says about my church in the last days? You've talked about the Laodicean church and how that, you know, how that there's supposed to be lukewarmness and we're all aware of it. But have you seen the part that says these works and greater works than these shall you do? This is acceptable year of the Lord. God is ready for his church to glorify him. But when people see you, they'll see Jesus. They'll see the love of God. They won't see the lust of the flesh. 
They won't see the pride of life. They'll see the love of God. God is calling you, church. Oh, he's calling. He's placing his sickle in deep this morning. And he's crying and he's saying, who shall go for me? Who shall I send? He's calling out and saying, who shall intercede for me? Who shall bring in this acceptable year of the Lord? Who shall stand and say, God, I will stand and I will bring in your glory and I will bring in your presence and I will bring in your love that the world may know Jesus. That's why you woke up this morning. That he might be glorified. That's why he wants to give you beauty for ashes. That he might be glorified. Oh church, can't you hear the Holy Ghost? This morning digging deep within you desiring to be glorified, desiring that he would come for a church and a bride without spot or wrinkle and without ashes. How do you get out those spots and the wrinkle? You get out the spots with a little bit of friction, a little bit of fire. You get out the wrinkles with an iron, a little bit of fire. Well, you dry clean your clothes a little bit of fire, a little bit of heat. Allow God to bring the heat in your life. Bring up the dross. Allow him to take it. Don't make an excuse, well, I was born that way. Oh, who cares how you were born? That's why he said you'd be reborn. That's why he said he'd make you a new creature. He's made me a new creature twice over. He's made me a new creature. He took this vessel, he formed it, and he shaped it. And in 1989, he took that vessel, and he crushed it. And he said, I don't like this vessel. There's a flaw here. There's something I don't like here. And he crushed it. He started shaping it and making it again. And I've learned a lesson. I do jump high, and I do dance, and I do shout. But I learned a lesson. Only you can wade in the water. Only you can step into the water when it's troubled. I can't make you. But God's asking people to come. Come, come, wade in the water. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water. For God is troubling the water. Come on and wade in the water. Wade. In the water, children, wait in the water. For God is troubling the water. Do you have faults in your life? Do you have weaknesses in your life? Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you might be healed. I could get up on top of that steeple and shout it today. I would tell you, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the year that God wants to be glorified in you. Amen.